The 39th episode of the Thelma Tapes is a compilation of holiday memories from the 1940s to the 1990s. Travelling far and wide, we take trips to Elgin, Scarborough, Budel Bay, Blackpool and Liverpool via Nouvelle Cuisine in France and safaris in Uganda. And brace yourself to hear about the excruciating holiday injury on a train. Back in time we go. Going on holidays, right, I was brought up during wartime, so we didn't have many holidays as such. But after the war, I think I'd be about, oh, well, between, between, between eight and ten years old, I think. The first holiday I had was with, just with my dad going up to Elgin. It was at Miss Elgin where he, his parents came from, and we were going up to visit cousins or something like that. And we got on the train, and there were several soldiers in the same carriage as we'd been, so my dad was chatting away to them, and I I was looking out the window as we passed up the island line and we got to Avi Moore and two of the soldiers got out there and it was the old carriages where you had a strap to open and you closed the windows and the doors open and for some reason they opened the door they got out took their kit bags away with them and my hand went between the the door and the the carriage and the soldier just slammed the door shut on my thumb and it really crushed it we opened it again, and of course I was screaming and screaming because uh, of the pain, and there was another soldier in the, in the carriage said, oh, it's all right, it's all right, we'll have a look at it, and I had a look at it, and this soldier said, he said, I'll tell you what I'll fix it, what I'll fix it, he says, here's a banana, and I said, what's a banana? He had a big bunch of bananas to take home, so he gave me my first banana <laughs> in this track, on this carriage, and that's one of the memories I have of my first holiday, and then we had a good holiday when we got to Elgin, but the aunt was there, she kept bathing this fractured thumb uh, with Dettol, and every time I smelled Dettol, it bit turned my stomach, not just from that. That's a, that's a holiday memory. So this is a memory of our first holiday abroad. In 1965, we'd moved to Joppa from Fife, and we were heading off to this holiday in France, and five of us in the car with these two huge suitcases that were very heavy, and my dad had them in a roof rack on top of the car. And, and the reason they were so heavy was that my mum decided she was going to France she wasn't sure what the food would be like so she took lots of tins of fruit with us because she was a bit concerned there wouldn't be nice food of course when you get to France and there's these fantastic markets full of gorgeous fresh fruit um, so these tins ended up being bought back home with us I remember the first holiday that I can consciously remember was in the 1950s, and I was very young at the time, and we went on holiday at a place called Budel Bay in a caravan. It was on the Northumberland coast near Bambra, so it was quite close to Lindisfarne and places like that. And we were there for a fortnight, and there was no shops locally at all, and... It only rained twice in the fortnight, once for 11 days and another time for about three days. And vans came round, you know, uh, with selling bread and stuff like that. But the thing was, they all got bogged down because it was so wet. So we had nothing to eat, you know. We had to kind of pick our way out. In, we're in Wellington's and go to a local shop, which was quite a, quite a ways away, just to get, uh, you know, something to sustain ourselves. So it was a miserable holiday, and like 30 years later, when I think of that, I still feel miserable. My earliest memory of going on holiday was the first time we went to the sea, which was actually the ocean, because it was in Brittany, and it was with the friends of my parents who had kids about the age of me and my siblings and I remember collecting seashells and the tides and I remember that we had to go to, into the sea with little plastic shoes to cut our feet on the rock and yeah that's the and eating eating sea snails that's <laughs> My memory of a holiday in Spain in 1963 was at a uh, campsite which, during a tremendous storm, got washed away shortly after we, we left, but we had to stay uh, in a garage elsewhere whilst uh, the storm abated. But it was a particularly uh, torrential storm that uh, wiped out the campsite and other campers' um, equipment was washed away. Dad's mum was a good dressmaker and every year she made me a dress and my brother a shirt out of the same material <laughs> 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 to go on holiday with. 
It was in the 1970s. My first holiday abroad was to Magaluf, and I was told before I went to put on a lot of sun cream, which I duly did. Unfortunately, I just burnt, and my face cracked off. When we got back, they said to my friend, Where have you been? You look fantastic. You're so tanned. And they turned round to me and said, Have you not been anywhere? Because I was as white as a sheet. I was brought up during the war, and my father, eh, my grandfather, was the superintendent of a cemetery. So I went there for my school holidays. (laughs) 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 And it wasn't until I was about nine that we went up eh, to Stonehaven in a train, and that was a big experience. But before that, it was just playing about in the cemetery behind the tombstones. (laughs) (laughs) I grew up on a farm, so we couldn't really do family holidays away because all the animals had to be looked after each day. So it was right. days out, you know, to different events and trips out in the car. And often to, like, agricultural shows or we used to just round the area in Aberdeenshire, you know, up to Bramar or places like that. Sometimes we went to Bakery to watch the salmon, what they call lauping, you know, and the, <laughs> I remember Sundays doing that, and that was about it. Well, we, my mother was from Liverpool, so we kind of... Our early holidays was always, again, it was just her and my two brothers was going down to Liverpool, which was uh, fantastic at that time. Liverpool was the in place, of course. Used to go across on the ferry to New Brighton and things like that. It was lovely, yeah. So one of the earliest memories of going on holiday that I have is probably going uh, to Blackpool on the Lancashire coast because that's where I grew up in Lancashire and I remember going with my mum and my dad and my grandma and I remember having a bucket and spade and playing on the beach and I think there might have been donkeys involved at some point because there were donkeys on the beach at, at Blackpool I remember it being very hot too because there are photographs that kind of uh, show me kind of paddling around with very little on but I do remember very very uh, specifically being at Blackpool on the beach. I went to this holiday like cottage in the north of Scotland with my family and my whole family got ill, all of us (laughs) and it was really really sad because I think it might have been food poisoning but my brother got really bad food poisoning and we had to drive to the hospital and I was left in the house alone that is my earliest memory of on a holiday and all I remember is like sitting at home at this not home in this holiday like cottage at the dining table just waiting for him to come back but it was really pretty and I was like this is such like a contrasting like series of events that's happening right now but that is like my first like first memory of a holiday which is quite grim I have to say. I think the first holiday I probably went on although I was a baby so I don't remember it was to Fraserburgh. My mother wanted to meet up again with her friends from fishing days so my mother, father and I as a baby went to Fraserburgh and there was a baby contest on and my mother's friend said oh you must enter so far for that you must so I got second prize and it made the local paper, the Press and Journal. There is a photograph of a woman sitting with a little boy sitting on her lap, looking like butter wouldn't melt. And my mother, frantically holding on to this big fat child who's trying to wriggle off her lap. And I'm second prize. If you looked at the two of them, you would think that other one was the girl and I was the boy, but I was a big, fat baby. Right, the year was 1949 or thereabouts, and we... My first holiday, we visited Scarborough on the east coast of England. My father, my mother, myself, my aunt, my uncle, and my big cousin Godfrey. And we stayed with a Mrs Unwin in a bed and breakfast in a side street in Scarborough, which was very regimented, and we had to be in at certain times and had to be away all day and not come back but it was very pleasant but very structured and I think the main memory I have on it is that uh, each morning I would go out with my father we'd get up very early and walk along the sea and we'd visit um, an ice cream parlour and all the time that I was there we were building up to the last day of the holidays when I was allowed at that tender age a Knickerbocker glory. Now anybody who didn't know what Knickerbocker glories are haven't lived they've got everything in it. You imagine what kids like 
Knickerbocker Glories had them. It was a developing close relationship with my father um, where we spent time together and really got to know each other and built on that relationship the rest of my life really until I lost him in my 30s, early 30s. And it was quite wonderful. There was the usual dynamics in the family relationships where my mother and her sister always competed all the time. Each one wanted to be the one in charge and lots of snide comments used to go backwards and forwards. The men had to do as they were told because they were strong Lancashire women and they ruled the roost uh, domestically. But we always had lots of laughs and lots of fun and... That's my memories of a first holiday. From about the age of five to about the age of 12, I went every year to Butlins Holiday Camp in Ayr with the whole family. That was my mum, dad, brother, my aunt, uncle, the children and the grandparents, my mum's mum and dad. Every year we went to Butlins Holiday Camp and it was wonderful, Mm -hmm. you know. And it was as we got, the kids got older, you were able to do more things, you know, yeah, rather than yeah. just have to leave the ballroom at nine o'clock or something. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. was good, yes. People didn't go abroad for the holidays. We used to go to a caravan in Skegness. And the other highlight, I suppose, of going away was the working men's club when the kids all used to get the, the children's day and they all used to pile on a coach and get a little bag with some pennies in to go and spend at Cleethorpes or whatever it was that the coach was going to. And that was it, seaside. No thoughts about going abroad, really. It would have been probably in the 80s. I grew up in the south, well, I grew up in Ireland and in the south of Ireland, and we used to go for a couple of weeks. My mum and dad used to hire a cottage by the sea, sort of all over. I've got six little brothers and sisters. And we would just go to this cottage and stay, but we would go and visit harbours or go and visit towns. And they used to have, in those days, sort of gala days in the harbours. And there was a... Like you wouldn't get away with it now, but all the kids used to be able to just go and swim in in the harbour, and there was like a big slippery pole thing that people used to stand on and fight, and like try and knock each other off and stuff, like a big telegraph pole. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't get away with that now. Mum and Dad went to Spain on their very first holiday, and it cost them thirty nine pound, and that was everything. That was their money, their spending money, and everything, and that would be in. Maybe the late 60s, something like that. I grew up uh, in Uganda and I've got quite lots of holiday memories. I remember in the 90s we were more in boarding schools and the only time you could go on a holiday when you performed well in school. So my mom, you know, every end of three months, which is a term time, we could decide where you want to go and my favorite place has always been the safari so i remember one time i didn't get a very good grades and she's like no you're not going and my brother and sister were supposed to go but then i said to her i would promise you next time i do well Mm -hmm. so the favorite place we always went to is queen elizabeth national park and it was named after queen elizabeth in the uk me i remember is coming to england when i got married and my parents my father uh, my father supported that, but my mother, because of her background, he didn't want me to leave. And she told me, when you go and she doesn't, he doesn't treat you well, just pack your things and come back home. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And I really, really loved, you know, I tried to go back home because uh, I was so proud and so, you know, uh, thinking about my background. And uh, one day uh, I told my husband, oh, I'm going back home because that's what my mom said. I don't think you are treating me well, so I'm going back home. And I packed all my things and said, where's my passport? He gave me my passport. And uh, by the time he came back from work, I was still at home. (laughs) (laughs) But you are getting married to this man. He's taken away from us to a foreign country. Let him be your mum, everything to you. And when I remembered that, I stayed back. My first holiday was 1959. And we went to the bus station for 10 o'clock at night. The SMT bus, the St Andrews Square bus station. And we travelled up to Perth, that was the first stop. Rhea, Stirling, before the fourth bridge. And we arrived in Wick in Caithness at half past one the next again day. It was an experience, eh? Hi, this is about my first holiday when I was a child. Well, I don't know if you could call it a holiday or a gathering. We all used to go down to Granny, Grandad, Uncles and Aunts 
Uh, we'd go down to the playing fields at Cramman. We'd have the, the prima stove, uh, bacon potatoes in tinfoil, play football with the uncles and aunts and stuff like that. Because it was not long after the war, and of course you couldn't afford to do things like go on fa- fancy holidays. Well, apart from anything else, I never knew anything about foreign holidays when I was that age. So that that's really much to say. It was a great time. Every year, summertime, Cramond. That was just your week's holiday. Many thanks to Andrew, Charlie, Evelyn, Russell, Joan, Rosie, Sophia, Mark, Delphine, our pals at Inkula Health and everyone who has shared their holiday memories with us. The Wee Museum in Ocean Terminal Leith is open 10.30 till 4 o'clock, seven days a week. We hope you can pop in to see us on Memory Lane very soon. We also have many more podcasts, a YouTube and TikTok channel, and a photo archive with over 5,000 pictures of the past, all accessible from www.livingmemory.org.uk. Until next time, we bid you farewell. <laughs>